Welcome. For our lesson in Blender today, we're going to be taking some of the basic shapes that we've learned how to work with, and we're going to make them a little bit more interesting. So up until now, we've learned how to add shapes that are predetermined by Blender. If we go to our Create tab over here, or if we press Shift A, we know that we have a few built-in shapes that Blender lets us use. The problem is, what happens when we want to create a more interesting sculpture? Part of the thing we're going to have to do in this class, our first major project, involves creating a 3D model of your choice. And creating a 3D model is severely limited if the only things we have access to are cubes and circles and spheres and cones. We need to be able to actually take these shapes and morph them. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. For this to work, we're going to work with two different modes in Blender. The mode we've been working in is called Object Mode. And if I can zoom in for a moment. See? Zoom tool's not working. There we go. OK. Let's zoom in where we actually want to zoom in. So down here, we can see that there's a little drop down that says Object Mode. Object Mode means that we are interacting with objects on a on the object level. So if I add a cube and a sphere and a cone, I can drag and move and rotate those things in object mode. And we already know a few tools from the last lecture to work with object mode. So if I look up here at my object mode tools, we know that we can transform objects with G, I can rotate them with R, and I can scale them with S. What makes Blender powerful as a 3D modeling tool is we can also use all three of these on parts of the object. So I can transform and rotate and scale individual pieces rather than the entire object itself. And that allows me to change the shape of the object. To do this, we're going to need a different mode. And that is called Edit Mode. Our shortcut for entering edit mode is the tab key. So if I hop back into Blender, I've got this cube that I want to shape and twist. I can get into edit mode either by pressing the tab key, and now the object turns orange. This orange glow is how I know I'm in edit mode. Edit mode means that I'm only dealing with this cube right now. If I were to add a sphere to the scene, so now there's a sphere hanging out, and I go into edit mode with the cube selected, I can't interact with this sphere at all. Edit mode means that only the shape I'm working with can be modified. Everything else in my scene is untouched. The other way to switch between edit mode and object mode, or if you forget which mode you're in, you can take a look at the little drop down. Down here on your toolbar, you have edit mode and object mode. The rest of these modes we're not going to worry about until later on in the class. Edit mode and object mode are all we care about right now. So in edit mode, I'm able to interact with individual pieces of this object. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this sphere because we're not going to need it. In edit mode, there are three types of selection that we can do. The first type of selection is called vertex selection. That means that if I right click any of the points on this cube while I'm in edit mode, I can select that point. And if we take a look at our object mode tools, transform, rotate, and scale, I can do all of these on a single point. So let's say I want to transform, just for example, this point. If I press the G key and start moving it around, I start manipulating just this single point in my object. And then when I've got it where I want it, I click to set it back down again. Now, I'm going to keep this square mostly the way it is, this cube, because I want to show us a very specific form of editing. But when we're in edit mode, we can alter these vertices however we would like. I can also grab multiple ones. I'm going to add another note here for us. I can select multiple things, doesn't matter what it is, by holding shift and then right clicking. So if I right click to select one vertice, 
I can hold shift and right click to select another. Shift again and shift uh, and clicking again allows me to select this entire side. In Blender we call this a face. So we have all four points selected and that lights up this face. Now if I want to transform, I'm transforming this entire side. And you can see it stretches and allows me to manipulate the cube in ways that are a little bit more interesting than we could before. I'm going to set that down and re reset it. All I'm doing when I reset the cube is using the undo shortcut. So if we were to add to our little shortcuts list here, um, useful shortcut, undo. That's control plus Z, just like it is in any other um, word editor or text editor. This is how we undo, and that's hugely useful. If we accidentally mess up something, we can undo immediately. So all I'm doing is moving this cube and then undoing to get it back to where I was. So let's make this cube into a snake. We're going to do a little activity today called Cube Snake. The way Cube Snake works is I'm going to use a brand new tool that we're about to learn about, and I'm going to use Scale and Rotate to make this side of the cube stretch out and get smaller and curve in an S shape. But to do this precisely, I'm going to need my camera shortcuts. I only want to pull this shape uh, to the left and right and up and down. So I only want it to go this way. To do that, I'm going to restrict my camera to top view. Take a look at our notes. Top view is number pad 7. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to press number pad 7 to get into top view. Now remember, if I don't know the shortcuts, I can always go down here to view and select top. See that there? I can always do that to manipulate my camera as well. So now I'm looking top down at my cube and I want to start pulling the cube this way, turning it this way and making it smaller. And to do that, I'm going to need three tools. Rotate and scale, R and S, those are what are going to allow me to spin it and to make it smaller. And actually, I'll show you that right now. Right now, if I were to rotate, if I press R, I can curve my cube. See that there? Ooh. Or I can use S to scale my cube, make it smaller. So it makes that side, just that side, smaller. But I need one more tool to be able to make my cube longer. We're not going to use translate here because we actually want to add to the cube. We want to increase its area. And to do that, we're going to learn about our first edit mode tool called extrude. And the shortcut, as you might guess, is E. Extrude allows us to add a new piece to our object. Extruding in this case is going to take that face that I've got selected right now and it's going to let me pull it out. So if I go in here and I select this, have this face selected, I can press the E key to pull out some more material. So I press E and then I start adding to my shape. So I'm going to pull out to about here. Now I'm going to use S to scale it down a little bit so my cube starts getting thinner. I'm going to press E to extrude again, only this time I want to start curving. So after I use E to extrude and I click to set it down, the clicking is very important. Remember, we always use a click to end our current action. Now I'm going to use R to rotate just a little bit, just a tiniest bit, and I'm going to use S to scale it down. Okay? And I'm just going to repeat this process over and over. I'm going to extrude, rotate, scale, extrude, rotate, scale. I'm going to show you a little, a couple more examples. I won't do the whole shape right now, um, but what we'll end up with as a finished product is this nice little S shape. And we do that by just continuing to extrude a little bit more, rotate a little bit more, uh, scale a little bit in, extrude a little bit more, rotate a little bit more, scale it in. So extrude, rotate, and I'm going to actually have him not change shape for a little bit, so I'm going to, or change size rather. I'm going to extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate. So all I'm doing is E and R over and over and over again. And you can see that the smaller the extrusion I make, so if I go just a little bit, 
and then rotate it, the more precise my movements are and the smoother the shape looks. See that there? So that's a nice smooth curve because I'm doing very small extrusions. I started out really big and then I got smaller. Now that I've started to curve the tail back in on itself, I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. Like so. You guys are going to make a whole S in class. Just to show what this is going to end up looking like though, I'm only going to do the tail end of it right here. So all I'm doing right now is extruding and scaling over and over and over again. Extrude, scale, extrude, scale. Till we're, so we're almost to the point where it just looks like it comes to a point. So now, we've got this cube structure that gets smaller and curves as it goes out. Now this looks really weird with the, the way the lines are right now. The lines only show up in edit mode. So as soon as I exit edit mode, remember I can either select down here or press tab, but I want to get used to my shortcuts. So I'm going to remember edit mode is tab. Press tab, now I'm out of edit mode. I can see that the shape no longer has those lines, but it still looks kind of blocky. If I look all over the shape, I can see where my extrusions begin and end. And that's a problem. I want my shape to look nice and smooth. So to do that, we're going to add a tool to our repertoire called Smooth. And Smooth can be found in the toolbar, in object mode only. You won't be able to find Smooth if you're in uh, edit mode. So I'm in object mode. If I go to Tools, right here where it says Shading, I have a Smooth option. Now let me show you how this changes if I go into edit mode. If I go into edit mode, suddenly smooth is nowhere to be found. I've got a whole bunch of tools here. Translate, rotate, scale. Here's extrude, right? I've got extrude available. But, and you can see it says shortcut E. But no smoothing option. I have to be in object mode with the whole shape selected to be able to smooth. So I'm going to select smooth. And there you go. You can still see some shading here just because of the way that the light plays off the object. And we can eliminate some of that shading by doing smoother turns. Like you can see right here, I made a really sharp rotation. And that's why we're seeing so much shadow there. So if you're smoother with your angles, you'll see less and less shadow. But that's how we get our object to look a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner as opposed to, if we press smooth, if we press flat rather, that brings us back to what we had before. So this is a smooth shade, and this is a flat shade. And that is how we use the extrude tool. So the extrude tool is really, really great to be able to take our um, objects and make them into something new. So to take the predetermined meshes and to transform them into something that's a totally different um, shape than it was before. So there's one more shortcut that you saw me use earlier that I want to make sure we go over, and that's delete. Earlier, I created a sphere. I'll do that again. Here's our sphere, and I'm going to move him over here so we can see him better. In Blender, delete, I'm going to add another shortcut here. Delete is the X key. It's not the delete key, unfortunately. It would be really convenient if it was backspace or delete or something we're used to. This is a tricky one to remember, but it's one you're going to use a lot. Delete is X. Okay? Kind of like how transform is G. They don't really match up. Same thing with delete. So if I go over here and I press X, it's going to ask me if I want to delete it. And I can click delete, and it's gone. The really interesting thing about deleting, though, is it also works in edit mode. So let's say I want to get rid of this region now. There's a couple of different things I can do. The first thing is I could go in and I could select all four points, right? So let's go into edit mode. I could select all four points if I wanted to, but that's really, really slow. In Blender, we have three different ways of selecting things in edit mode, and they all live down here. Right now, I'm selecting by vertex or by point. So I can only select an individual point at a time. 
See that there? And if I want to select an entire face, I have to select all of the points around that face. But that's slow. Let's say I wanted to select this entire edge. The second piece here with the little orange line is edge select. Edge select means that if I click anywhere along here, I select an entire edge. And now I can do all my editing on that edge. The one in this class that we're probably going to use the most is called face select. So face select lets me select entire faces at a time. I can click anywhere here and it'll select the entire thing. So with face select active, it makes it a lot easier for me to select the entire area. And on the back, when I was pulling everything out, I could have used face select instead, so I wouldn't have to shift and click all of the points. So face select is really useful for grabbing large areas. Now right now, let's say I want to make this guy hollow. So I want to delete this entire face. In edit mode, I delete exactly the same way as I do in object mode. So instead of deleting using X to delete the entire shape, I'm going to use X to delete just this section. And right here, I'm going to write things we can select. We can select vertices or points. We can select edges and we can select faces. Remember, depending on how fine tuned you want to be, we can increase or decrease the amount of selection. Apparently I'm still logged into Skype. With Skype. Skype open. All right, so I'm going to delete this entire face. I've got my face selected. I'm going to press X for my shortcut, and I am going to select faces. So this window is asking me what I want to delete. It's a little bit different than um, the object deletion, because when I delete an, an entire object, only that object can go away. There's no option for me to delete anything smaller than that. Here it's saying I could either delete by vertex, I could delete the edges, the faces, only the edges and faces, there's a whole bunch of choices. But usually we want to delete whatever it is we've selected. Because we've selected a face, we want to delete the entire face. And by doing that, we can now see that this guy's hollow. This is a great way to create a hallway or a um, container of some sort that you want to look inside of, an instant way for us to make a room, right? Suddenly, if we were to move our camera in here, it would look like we have a room. So face deleting is a great way to open up a shape. And remember that selective deleting works for everything. If I go back to vertex mode, just like this, and then I select a vertex, let's say I select this corner, and I delete it, weird stuff is going to happen. So I delete the vertex, and now that vertex gets deleted, which means that everything attached to it goes away. So suddenly, I've got no top, I've got no left side, because this whole corner went away. So by just selecting that one vertex, pressing X, deleting that vertex, the vertex is gone and everything attached to it is gone. So you can see that we've already created a shape that's a lot different from the shape that we've started with, which makes extruding and smoothing very, very powerful. Connected with this is a video where I'm going to show you how we create a complex shape building from the ground up, but that's going to be done in a separate selection or a separate video. So I hope that you've enjoyed this one. We're going to be making cube S's like this in class. So if you need to refer back to this video, make sure that you do so. Thanks for watching.